successor calls upon uh, insert record. Now let's see how to prepare WSO2 EI to broker profile so that it will work as a message broker. So get a copy of WSO2 EI product and name it as MB and uh, go to the bin folder and start the uh, script broker.sh. So this time EI will start as a message broker. So here we are going to use a uh, store and forward pattern. So what it will do is, uh, uh, so we, we will have a proxy for the incoming message and the message will be stored in the message store and the message processor will pick up the messages from, from message store and send it to the backend which is the data service we have defined. So we, uh, so we can extend this uh, using a reply sequence as well. The message is store is that by the queue in uh, message broker. So we need to prepare WSO2 EI to connect with the broker. The client will folder inside broker folder and copy and this client and Jeronimo gave us JAS into WSO2 EI home lib folder. So those are the jars required to connect to the message broker. So inside uh, configuration folder, open the jmbi.properties file and uh, you need to define the queue connection factory. So let's replace what is existing in there. And we, we need to define the two queues that we are going to connect. So we will comment out the topic one, and we have queue for customers and another queue for companies, company records. So let's. Uh, so now let's shut down uh, WSO2 EI integrator profile and start it back so that. Uh, the classes will be loaded into the JVM. So now let's go to the message stores and define a message store. So uh, let's define a store for customers called customer request store. So this is the Initial context factory name. So we need to point to the jmdi.properties file inside comp folder. So, so if you see additional parameters, we need to define the, the queue name here. So we are defining this store for customers. So let's do the name as customers so we need to view the JNBI name here not the real name JNBI name the connection factory will be key connection factory so other things we we'll keep it to default save it and let's define another message store for companies as well so this is for customers, so you need to define another one for companies. So let's define an endpoint uh, for data service. So, uh, so what we are going to do here is actually uh, going to get the request record service URL and and get it into an endpoint. So I am going to type localhost here. Okay, let's test the service and close. So we have the endpoint now. So let's add the sequence. So I will go in to define the sequence as db call this data sequence. So this is the sequence that is going to be get hit after uh, the DB has replied in the message processor. 
so I am going to do a simple log so I will reply from db and then basically we need to use the drop mediator to drop the message from here so the data flow we are not going to do anything with the message after db has replied in a message processor to pick up message from message store i am defining a forwarding message processor customer request forwarder let's define an endpoint endpoint will be the data service endpoint we have configured so you can see with there are various configurations like forwarding interval retry interval maximum redelivery attempts so by default it is four so let's define the reply sequence the sequence we have just created db call status sequence which will drop the message and let's save the message processor so in the same way we need to define a message uh, message another message forwarding processor for customer uh, companies so here uh, the same endpoint will be used and now the message store will be company request store and the reply sequence will be saved and now let's save it so uh, if you uh, look at the message broker logs now you can see there are two new subscriptions being added to the broker so those are from message processors actually when message processor is deployed it will create two subscribers and it will automatically create the re uh, relevant queues in the broker side